Hello, everybody. This is Oliver speaking from the middle of a global pandemic where everything is a little bit weird and also where everything is now remote and virtual. So last week I was virtually in India at the Bangalore Python Developers Meetup talking about taming the complexity of PyCharm from your keyboard. Something went a little bit wrong with the recording and I naively offered to just quickly re-record the talk so they can upload this to their channel then. Uh, well, it turns out it's a little bit different if you have to record something. Especially, the horrible thing is you can stop the recording if something goes wrong and start again and stop and start and stop. So after having done this now for about 50 times, I'm a bit fed up with it. So I'm just doing this now in one go. And I'm letting one of my favorite games running in the background to remind me that nothing is ever perfect. Even not this game, although it was one of my absolute favorites. I played it when it came out uh, in 1987, when I was 15. And it had a revolutionary user interface. It might have not been the one, but at that time, to me, it was revolutionary. Um, you will see it pop up in a second. It's a so-called point-and-click adventure, which means you had a pointer, which was something entirely new for me. I had a Commodore 64, uh, and this kind of interface, which you see now, which is now antiquated and boring, was kind of blowing my mind. And also, I think I learned more English playing games like these uh, than in school. I was horrible in school in English, and that was actually fun. So while exploring the environment, you're learning the terminology, you're learning new words, uh, and you're working your way into this complex universe. And this is pretty much the same that happens when you're learning how to use a new IDE. So here's the, the page, and here's the promise which I am determined to keep and I'm determined not to press the stop button now. So the materials uh, of what you hear here are here. So if you're fed up listening to me already and you just want to see what this is about, you can also go to my GitHub account to PyCharm settings. There are my actual settings. The most important thing in the context of this talk is my key map, um, which you could just download and import, I guess, if you wanted to try it out. But I don't think that that's a good idea. It's more about uh, you getting an idea what you might want to use for yourself. So an ID is not a point and click adventure. At least it shouldn't be forever. The beginning, it, in the beginning, it's great to learn and to explore the interface. And there's many visual clues uh, and many things you can explore and find out how to get stuff done. But at some point, it starts to get annoying. At least that was uh, the case for me. And then I started looking into how I can use uh, the keyboard more to do things. Um, so this is now somehow what we will look at a lot uh, it's a very much simplified interface, there's less visual clutter. And for this, uh, you will have this as a visual hint, which I switch on now. So that's screen key, uh, which will show the keys I press. And then there's also this, which is a plugin called Presentation Assistant which shows the names of the actions that are triggered via the shortcuts. And if there is a standard shortcut for, I set the Windows shortcuts here, then this is also shown. But this is usually not my shortcut. As you see here, that is Alt-G and that's Alt-9. So this gives you then a pretty good idea what you can do with a keyboard. Talking about, this is my keyboard. Um, it's a German layout. Uh, one of my uh, lesser dreams I want to achieve is to switch to a, a US uh, layout at some point because the 
the parentheses and the braces, they are just in a horrible position on German keyboards. This is a control key. In German, it's called Steuerung. That is the Windows key or also the Super key, uh, Alt key. So these are important then in the context of what we're looking at. So what you see is, yeah, also if you think uh, what kind of weird interface is this, it's a Linux system, but with a different window manager, i3 window manager. I won't talk about this now, uh, but this is also, the idea there is also to have to use the mouse less. If I open a new window, it opens in full screen right away, and I can pretty much do everything with it with a keyboard. Um, so screen key, yeah, I talked about these. And to make sure I don't cheat, I will also switch the touchpad off most of the time. Also to see if it's actually really possible to um, overcome these inbuilt instincts, because I'm using the touchpad a lot to, to scroll and whatever for. I don't even sometimes consciously know what I use it for, I think. So I'll just switch it off for the purpose of this. Before I go into the specifics of PyCharm, I want to talk about some general things that helps you to use the keyboard more and the mouse less. So the first thing is activating the context menu with the keyboard. You might have that key on your keyboard, it's called the menu key, and uh, you can use that or you can also uh, use a tool to simulate it. Um, on Linux you can use xdo tool. So if I press if I send the key command to xdo tool, then it opens the, the context menu. And if I do the same in PyCharm now, I put this to super Y, then here I have the context menu. And that works in every program. The next thing that can help you to use the keyboard more and the mouse less is making use of mnemonics. Let's say you're still using the menu. This is a menu here on top. Uh, underline letters, which signal to you that if you use the Alt key and that letter, and that you can jump to that context menu right away. So if I press Alt U, I can get to the Run menu and move around with the arrow keys, and for example, go to Edit Configurations. Let's switch that off again because I don't use this anymore. I assigned many of those letters that are usually there and not mnemonic to things that I use more now. And uh, getting to these is not usually necessary anymore because I get to things in different ways. So I can reuse those alt keys, uh, these alt letter combinations for other things. The next general thing is choosing and activating dialog checkboxes and buttons. Uh, they also turn up in all kinds of programs and usually you can, instead of using the mouse, use the tab to switch between the options and use space to activate and deactivate checkboxes and then use space or enter to activate that behaves a little bit differently in different programs. Um, the, the framework that is used by PyCharm uh, and the IntelliJ uh, IDs in general is called Swing. And this has a different default behavior. So if you press um, Enter there, it always activates the default button, which um, confuses the hell out of me, which is different, at least the way I know it. And there's a plugin to fix this. It's called the Swing Buttons Fix, which basically uh, makes it so that if you press Enter, the highlighted button is always activated. Um, so let's look at an example. Um, I want to revert the changes in Editor XML. So this is a classic case where some kind of pop-up turns up. I can move around right away with the arrow keys to choose what I want to do. if this was not what I wanted to do. And then I can use tab. Uh, now rollback is activated. And now close is activated. So if I press enter now, 
this will be closed and I do not do the rollback. Yeah, and the last point I would like to make before we move to PyCharm is always be aware that keys like escape, tab, enter and control enter usually have special meanings and can also make it possible for you to not having to use the mouse in a lot of contexts. Uh, you'll see that a lot during the next minutes when I'm showing you things in PyCharm, but just try it also, try it in different programs where you're annoyed that you have to use the mouse. Um, yeah, maybe you'll discover a few interesting shortcuts. Okay, but now how to have a good time with PyCharm. First thing is uh, a general warning. Uh, if you're playing around with your configuration, you might mess things up. You might want to be able to uh, follow back on something that you changed, revert something. You also want to have a backup. So as the configuration of PyCharm is just a bunch of XML files in a folder, I would recommend put that in a Git repository and have that somewhere else online on a, in a private repository on GitHub or wherever or GitLab. And so you have always a backup. There's also the possibility to sync your settings between IDEs, which is really handy, uh, but things can go wrong there. So it's always good to have your own backup. Next thing is discoverability is your friend. I talked about this already in the beginning make use of the visual clues and of the really useful um, interface and only start switching off these things when they start to annoy you and when you know your way around. To make yourself more familiar with it, read the documentation, check out the great PyCharm guide and explore the settings. Have a look around what you can change. Uh, that will give you a lot of inspiration about the possibilities and there's also the productivity guide, um, which contains a lot of tips. Depending on how often you use them, you can even look, what did I never use? And should I use that? And how do I access that via the keyboard? So that can be really helpful. And last but not least, explore how you can extend or simplify PyCharm via yeah, installing, activating, and deactivating plugins. But be aware that plugins increase the complexity of the tool and therefore should be seen not just as a bonus, but also as a potential burden and source of bugs and weird interactions. So just installing a bunch of plugins um, might not be a good idea. Okay, and as a final thought, the best time to improve your workflow is while you're working. When you're getting annoyed doing something over and over again in the same way, in a, in a maybe more complicated way than necessary, that's the point then when you can stop for a moment and think about if you want to go about this in a different way. And the most obvious thing for me in a lot of these situations when I'm learning a new tool is to figure out how I can do things easier with the keyboard. Okay, that's enough of that. Now some general concepts that are also important in the context of using the keyboard more. The most important thing, search everywhere pop up, you saw already a few times. So if I press shift shift, so double click on shift, this search everywhere pop-up comes up and I can just start typing and it by default searches for classes, files, symbols and actions. And in these actions, there's also settings included. So I can even change settings here. Um, I can have them all activated or I can choose specific sub parts with the top keys. And I can also search in, depending on where I am on the right side, you see that changes sometimes. So I'll include disabled actions. 
that might make sense in some cases, but normally it doesn't. That's why it's deactivated. And uh, this little hint here already points towards that you can even assign keyboard shortcuts from here. So that we are going to use that a lot. Uh, I assigned Control Shift P to the actions and Control P to the files. I can still swap around, it's just where I'm starting. So quite often I just want to look for an action or just execute an action. And it's also um, muscle memory wise the same thing as it's in Sublime Text and Visual Studio Code. They have the same shortcuts for kind of the same things. So that also helps to sometimes think about uh, to synchronize keyboard shortcuts you use a lot in other programs, to synchronize them between them if it's at all possible. Yeah, and then in general, wherever you are, just start typing. I mean, you saw I press shift shift and I just start typing. And if I go to the settings, for example, and I just start typing, it starts to filter and I can move through the filters, filtered items. Um, also in the project view, if I start typing here, I'll open it like this, uh, I start filtering things from what is visible. So that is a, a, a theme that goes through everything. Let me switch off the touchpad that I'm not tempted to use it. So now I'm a bit surprised that I have this activated and there's no, aha, okay, so there's a structure. So filters are everywhere. Uh, yeah, I showed a few examples. I think that's enough to, to get an idea and uh, you will see it over and over again. Just start using it. Uh, context matters is also very important. Um, if I'm in the project view, for example, and I want to do something in this folder, if I, for example, want to do find in path and I only want to search in that folder, I activate this and this directory is activated uh, by default. I can still switch around. I can use my keyboard to do this can have scope, project, module. Yeah, but the default is I'm on the folder. Okay, I want to search in that folder. And this context sensitivity is also everywhere and usually quite intuitive. So if I'm in a, in a file and I use the context depending actions there, then they're happening on that file and so on. And there is also more than simple shortcuts. Sometimes a simple shortcut might not be what you want, especially if you use the search everywhere pop up a lot. Um, and it also helps also to keep things synchronized with other areas where you might do the same things. Uh, one example would be Git. I have some really simple Git commands also just added as an abbreviation in search everywhere. So that I can type in git push or git pull um, or git lock. And if I type git lock in search area everywhere, that is um, attached to show history, which is the corresponding activity in PyCharm. So abbreviations might be uh, helpful. I can also type die to exit PyCharm, which I won't do now. Depending on my mood, uh, I can type die abort or quit. They all point towards the same action. So that's a nice way uh, to make things more keyboard driven in a different way. And then there's also second stroke actions. So you can do things similar to, I think Emacs works a lot that way. I never really used Emacs much, uh, but um, 
if you have these combined shortcuts where you press Control X and then another letter, and that means something specific then. So you can also do that in PyCharm. I'm not using that yet. Maybe I'll start using it. I haven't really felt the need to use that yet. So I'm using mainly normal shortcuts and abbreviations. Okay, so that's enough about this. And now let's go to the meat of it. Um, first though, as you might do that a lot, uh, some things about configuring shortcuts. Um, there's a few things to keep in mind. So what am I talking about? Let's type in shortcuts and see what's happened. Aha, configure shortcuts is an action I can go to directly. So let's go there. So this is the, the area where you configure shortcuts if you don't do it directly from search everywhere, which is also possible. But if you're doing uh, some basic configuration or you're exploring also what you can do, um, this is the better place to go. So you can assign the same shortcut to different actions and that might make sense as some actions have the same meaning in different contexts and can and should therefore be reused to keep things consistent. Um, one example is in my case controlling uh, closing tabs. So I want this to be control W because that's also same shortcut for example in my browser. If I want to close a browser tab, I press Ctrl W. So I want to have the same shortcut in PyCharm and I want to have the same shortcut in all contexts. And there's two, two contexts that matter here. Uh, the, the active tab in the editor window and uh, the active tab in the tool window. And they don't have the same shortcut by default, but I synchronized them and now uh, I don't have to think about where I am if I want to close something in the active context. I close this with Control W. So I have, for example, I have this one open. If I close this one with Control W. If I search for two different things, So now I have two searches open and if this is active, so now this is active, if I want to close the search, I also press Ctrl W. Then you can use the search bar to get an overview of related shortcuts uh, and sets of shortcuts that belong together. For example, things that have to do with splits. Search for them and you can change them all in a group. And you can also use the easily overlooked and not keyboard accessible, as far as I can say, find actions by shortcut which is a reverse search. So if I click on this and press shortcut, like I did that before, uh, I search from the shortcut to what is assigned to this. This can be really handy to figure out uh, conflicts or shadowing, because as soon as you start configuring these things a lot, you might run into conflicts and problems with precedence so that some shortcut is set in a different context because as you saw, you can assign the same shortcut to different um, activities. And uh, what you want to happen might not happen. So this is the way you can debug this then. And last but not least, use Alt-Enter to assign shortcuts directly. So, uh, if I wanted to assign, this is the switcher, which I switched off. I talk about this in a minute. Uh, if I wanted to assign something to it, I just press Alt Enter and the keyboard shortcut assignment window pops up right away. 
and while I'm here, so here's the second stroke I'm talking about, special shortcuts are hidden here. So here I can set enter, escape tab, control tab, and so on, which I can't type in here directly like by pressing the shortcut because something else happens then. So now that we know how to configure shortcuts, let's actually do something with it now. Losing the switcher and the tabs. This is about not just using the keyboard more and the mouse less, it's also using the keyboard in a different way. Uh, I, When I had to set up my config again, I looked at how I was doing things and changed a few of them in, in a pretty radical way. So normally you have tabs visible. Usually I had them at the top. So now I have only one file open. Let's open a few more files and let's get another project in that contains code because this is just my settings. So let's get one of my projects in and attach that to this project. So now I have my settings and this project that contains a lot of Python code. So if I open a few files here, let's do that from the project view by navigating there. Let's just open a few Python files and as you see now whatever I open there's never more than two so that's one of the chain things I changed I set the closing policy to two so I can only have two tabs open at the same time which also makes this whole tab view a little bit redundant or let's say unnecessary because I can see where I am up here so this is why I switched them off. But usually how you navigate it, you have the tabs and then you have the switcher. Let's uh, reinstall this old keyboard shortcut. So I would like to assign this to alt tab, but if I press alt tab, that doesn't work. So I need this. I want this to be a uh, control tab, sorry. Control tab and they are assigned already. So this is what I'm using for this now. Uh, let's see what happens if I leave it. So if I leave the assignments, uh -huh. so the switcher wins over the recent files that I have set to the same shortcut. So this is what I was talking about before regarding precedences. So, but this is now the old behavior. So if I press Control tab, I get the switcher. If I leave it uh, right away, then it switches to the other tab. So, and if I press several times, I can move around in here and also get to uh, two windows. But I don't like this anymore. So I got rid of this. So let's get rid of this shortcut again. Uh, no, I actually can't get rid of it like this. So we have to go through the normal way. Uh, switcher. So there. Remove. Control tab. So other seems to have a higher priority than what I had before. And control tab recent files which is in view but now it should work again the way I had it before so let's switch off the tabs again tab placement none and if I press control tab now then I have the recent files pop up which looks very similar but there's one important difference. Uh, well, no, there's two important differences. One is if I press Control Tab again, like muscle memory, not what I would have expected happens. Doesn't switch to another tab. 
I will switch them around. It just uh, activates show change only or deactivates it. And this here contains all files I used recently and not just the files that are currently open. Um, the, 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 the fact if a file is currently open or not is really not that important uh, when you're working in the project. It's, it's pretty arbitrary if you think about it. It's more important what you worked on recently, whether it's open or not, and if it has changed or not. And I can also get uh, at the tool windows from here. So this is now the default of our press control tab. And another thing that I now assigned to control shift tab is something I never really used before. And I'm playing around with this now, if this is useful, it seems useful. So control shift tab now opens a pop-up with recent locations that I worked on. So this is also somehow trying to transcend this idea then that I'm switching between files or tabs. I'm trying to switch between locations that I have worked on and they can be in the same file as you see or in different files. So if I want to jump to this location that I worked on before, I go there directly. So what's next? And um, browsing, exactly. So when trying to figure out how things work, it's often necessary to browse around the code drilling down some definition stack and getting back to where you work from there. Shortcut wise, this is something I haven't figured out yet um, with a satisfying consistency because there are two different actions. Uh, let me show you first what it looks like if you do it mouse driven. So I click on, for example, this, I get to the class definition. And if I click on this again, I get an overview of the usages. So this action is go, called go to declaration or usages. So this is by definition assigned to control click, which I used a long time. And there is also though a shortcut that I use for a long time from the project view, which is called jump to source, which uh, does what it says, it jumps to the source. So if I'm in project view and I'm on a file and I want to go into this file and not just open it, if I just want to open it, I press enter and the focus still stays here so I can look at it. Um, but if I want to jump into it, I press F3. So I thought, okay, I just assign jump to source to uh, F3. Well, actually, no, I don't have to do anything because I have jumped to source already. So if I use this, it works, but only works on this step. But if I'm on the declaration, then nothing happens. Or if I'm in the word, then this happens. It jumps to the beginning of my declaration, which is not what I want. Because this is different from this, it's not go to decoration or usages. I'd like to see them merged somehow. I think they should do the same thing. For now, I just have shift F3 assigned to show declaration or usages, but I, I, I'm not really sure what the sense is behind it. I would consider this uh, an inconsistency bug and jump to source. Um, it's either just not needed or I don't really get the subtle differences. Okay, that was browsing. Now the keyboard centric view on the project view. So it quite a lot already. You will know it if you know PyCharm at least a little bit. This is also pretty much usable completely from the keyboard, except for settings here or some of the settings here. I haven't looked into that in detail yet because usually you set this up once and 
then it stays that way. But let's try something. So show members. What if I want to show members and I don't want to go there? Can I do this? Uh -huh. So I can also do this here. So a lot of these things, all I need to know again is the names. And then I can toggle it if I go here now and trip beyond. So and show members is actually quite nice. Um, that merges the, the Firebase view with the symbol view. So you can look into the files, what symbols are defined in those files. Yeah, so let's leave that on for now. Uh, so yeah, navigating around in it, arrow buttons or the filtering, you just start typing. Now I can open this. And I'm still here because I pressed enter, didn't press show source. I can fold everything with control minus. This is also useful in code and everything. And I can switch between the view. So project is the standard. Project files shows me everything. So also my idea folder here, for example, that usually is invisible. If I just have project. And also other views into the project. So problems, I obviously have no problems with my code. So there's nothing or which files are actually open and which files are changed. And this is all accessible via the keyboard. Switch that back to project. Yeah, I also pointed out the difference between enter and jump to source. Um, there's one gotcha I'd like to talk about that uh, should be avoided. There is this setting, avoid um, open files with single click, that's right, open files with single click. Um, this messes up recent files and recent locations. And if I like to work with this now mainly, I don't want this to be messed up, but if you have open files with single click activated, then that means if you are navigating around with the keyboard, this is interpreted as a single click. So if I go over these files, they would all be opened and they would all start showing up in my recent files, which I don't want. So this should be off. Uh, and it also has a really annoying inconsistency, which I think is a bug. Um, so if a file is already open, then it transfers the focus to the editor, whereas it doesn't do that when the file was not opened yet. And that is super confusing. So I just have this off and I can't see a reason why this should ever be on uh, if you use things from the keyboard. So keep that off. If you want to have a quick peek into a file without opening it, there is also the quick definition, which one might think works only on code, but quick definition, Control shift E, uh, I in my case, also works on files. So I have this pop-up then that shows me the contents of the file. Very handy. Yeah, so that was the keyboard centric view on the project view. What do we have next? Ah, yeah, jump to navigation bar. Right. So if the project view is actually a bit too much for me at the moment and I want something more lightweight, let's say I'm in, uh -huh, you see, muscle memory. Let's say I'm here and I want to do something relative to this file. Or I want to know where I am. So I just want to have a quick view into where I'm in, in without having to open the project view. Um, I can uh, say jump to navigation bar. which I assign to Alt Y, which is really uh, easy to reach. And I use this quite often at the moment. So I assigned it to that. 
So if I press Alt Y, there's this navigation bar that is in the classic uh, interface. It is there, it's up there. So if I say I'll jump to navigation bar now, then I'm up here. And if I make this in, if I don't show this in the normal view, then I get this nice little pop-up here, which does the same for me. So when I can navigate around there with the arrow keys and I can do things relative to it, I can navigate relative to my file or just get an overview where I am. Yeah, so there's also a gotcha about this though, um, which is that I told you about this keyboard based invocation of the context menu. That doesn't work with that sadly. So if I uh, invoke something on here and I want to do something with config by, uh, let's say, doesn't matter. I just want to have the context menu for config.py and I press the shortcut. I don't get that for the file. I see that right away. It's not a file-based context. It is the context of my editor window. So that doesn't work. But yeah, nothing is ever perfect. So just to make that clear again, if I am somewhere here and I want to invoke this, I press Alt Y and down, and then I see where I am. I am in Kvi.py, so this is highlighted in the context of the folder where I am. So that's Alt Y down. So next is if search everywhere is not enough, find or replace in path. This is just an important tool window and we can look at it from the perspective of keyboard centric use. Um, general in big projects and with dynamic languages like Python, not everything can be perfectly analyzed and navigated or refactored via the index symbols. So this is just a very important tool and worth exploring. There are a lot of knobs to customize the behavior on the fly, depending on what needs to be done. And not everybody, everything is reachable via the keyboard, uh, but most of it. So I invoke this. So find in path and research in path. The only difference is really this one line, pretty much. Um, I can change the scope. I can do this with a keyboard module with the mnemonics, Alt-D, Alt-S, Alt-M, Alt-P. And if I'm an Alt-D, also the focus is right here. So I can start typing. I can even search other places that are outside of my, my project. And scope, same, if I choose the scope, I can change the scope here with the arrow files or start typing, like filter everything, never forget this. And if I tap, I end up on this button, so I can't reach this with the keyboard, for example. Oh, shift enter. What's that? Shift enter. Okay, so I was lying. I can even access that with the keyboard. And I can also change the file mask. Um, when I'm up here, so I shift tap my way through there. That is not really super convenient, but once you are determined to use the keyboard, you find out these things. So the file mask I can get at also um, via mnemonic, mnemonic, and I can choose 
or type in different types here. So that's also possible. What else is hiding behind here? Show filter pop-up, control alt F. So that's also possible to get there with the keyboard. And I can pin this. I haven't found a shortcut for that yet. So pinning means if this loses focus, it doesn't close. I hardly ever use that though anyway. And down here are also two important switches uh, that I can know, don't know how to change them with the keyboard, but I have them set to this uh, always anyway. So I always want to open results to open in a new tab. And I want to skip results tab. If I have only one usage, I just want to jump to that single usage. Um, yeah, so if you're searching for something here, these are also behind shortcuts already, match case, alt C, words, alt O, regex, alt X. And if I search something, I can navigate through the different hits here already with alt down and alt up. So yeah, it's pretty much nicely accessible via the keyboard. And with escape like everywhere, I get back to my editor. So, did I forget something? Yeah. So, if I look for something, if I'm on a search result, if I press enter, I jump to that result. And if, independently of where I am here, if I press control enter, I open a new tool window with the search results, which I can then explore. And if you want to keep several search results, I showed you that already, activate open results in new tab, which is here at the bottom. Yeah, I think that's enough about that window. Okay, now we are looking at least a little bit into navigation inside of a file. If you want to go a bit deeper there, think about installing the idea vim plugin and use the, the vim bindings. This is about normal, let's say, navigation. Uh, let's open some kind of file we can navigate around in. Oh, want to open a file. Of course, the usual page down, page up, arrow keys, all these kinds of things uh, are available for normal navigation. Uh, what I like um, is the file structure. So you not only have the structure view or can have the structure view on the left uh, or right or wherever, um, but you can also have a structure pop-up. So if we close that structure view, um, I can navigate around like this. So I can jump to the lock object or to process command, I usually only need two or three keystrokes and I can get where I want. Uh, so that's handy. Then that's not really navigation, but it just fits here. Um, you can activate this structure tool window just to have a, a general overview. M might be more interesting than having the project view open, although if you have this show members, you have a similar effect, but this is more focused. Then there's previous next method. Let's look for actions there. Uh, I put these on control shift up and down. So 
Control shift up and down, I can jump between functions and methods. And obviously there's find. I can just uh, find, find any kind of text and navigate around there using control up, down. Which is previous next occurrence. Um, what else do we have? Uh, yeah, I like to try to leave a file without any kind of static warnings. So I have put the uh, go to next and previous error to control down and up. So if I go to up here, I have an error here uh, that I should fix. And if I don't have an error here anymore, or let's say I ignore this error for now, suppress for statement, then next thing is I have this typo in here. Uh, I can add this to dictionary. And then I don't have any errors anymore in the file, which is also shown by this little uh, check mark. Well, let's for now revert that. So those are ways of navigating around inside of a file. There's another classic one, just go to a line, line 70, column 30, and I go there. And something that I'm playing around with now, because I saw this uh, when, an, uh, when somebody showed me something with Emacs, uh, it comes originally from Vim, it's called Easy Motion. And the idea is I want to go to a certain character that I can see on the screen and I want to go there conveniently without having to use my mouse. Uh, how do I do that? I walk a shortcut and let's say I want to go to the M from the mutually exclusive group a bit further down. So I press the character that I want to go to and then I'm offered characters that if I press that one, it's either one or two characters, then I get there. So if I press now the W, then I end up with my cursor there. That's an interesting way to move around, I would say. Uh, needs a bit of getting used to the idea. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm using it now for a little while and I quite like it. There are different implementations. There's, I'm using the jump plugin at the moment. There's also Ace Jump, which is a bit more sophisticated, but I also find it uh, at least the, the keyboard, uh, the, the characters it offers for you to jump somewhere, they are uh, not as convenient to type as with a jump pl um, plugin. So if I want to jump somewhere here, it's usually something that's on the home row. Uh, and with that other plugin, it's usually something that contains sets and W's and X's. So on first look, I find the jump plugin a bit more um, easier to use. Uh, yeah, so that's something you might want to look into. And that's enough, I think, about uh, navigation inside of a file. Uh, if I'm not completely mistaken. Yeah, we come now to the next big part which is taking control of the UI. You have seen a lot of this already by me using it, but now let's talk about this explicitly. So there is this switching between sections and pop-ups, tap and shift tap. So tap, shift tap. It's very simple, but if you don't know it, um, it makes life harder. And then there's also uh, switching between areas and tool windows, so which is also tab and shift up. So if I have this new um, model commit view, which I really like, this model commit window, let's pull this up. I don't know how to do this with a keyboard either. I can change a lot of things with a keyboard, but this not, the split. Uh, I can switch between 
the sections also with tab and shift tab. So I can um, edit the commit message or get an old one. And I see now I'm here. And if I want to go here into the file view, I can go there with shift tab. And with tab, I can get back to the commit message in here. I can look at diffs and navigate through the diffs, get back here, get back to the commit window. So that is really convenient. Tab, shift, tab. Uh, job window. Yeah, and then there's escape. And in my case, control escape. I think that's a different shortcut also um, escape always gets you back to the last used editor so if i was in here if i'm in the project view now if i press escape i get back if i am here if i press escape i get back if i'm in here i press you you got the idea the other thing is though if i was here in the project view and I went back to the editor. If I want to go back to where I was last, I can press, in my case, Control Escape. Um, and this invokes Jump to Last Tool window. So that's also quite handy. I would love this to actually just work with Escape. I'm not sure if that's possible or if there's something in the way of it, but I think, naively, if I'm in here and escape wouldn't make any sense in the current context i mean if i press escape now just not, nothing happens so instead i could jump back to the last use tool window i'm not even sure it's a good idea i have a feeling though that it would be nice if it at least would be configurable but i'm quite happy with escape and control escape or going to the places directly, so Alt P uh, going to the project window, Alt Control S structure, etc. Oh, yeah, and that's a bug uh, I found while preparing for this. So, if you have this preview, sometimes you see on the left the structure view doesn't realize. Um, actually now in my markdown file again so I really and I and there's no way also I can go escape ah okay now it worked that also doesn't work but now it lost its place so if I go in there now I have to recreate uh, where we were yeah so that's a little bug now let's talk about the ways to control the tool windows. One important one is hide, restore all windows. So let's say I have a project view open and I have a search open and I want to get rid of them for now. I don't want to close them one by one. I just want to get rid of them now and I might want to switch them back on in a minute. So. I'll do this with Control Shift F12, and they're all gone. And if I press it again, they're there again. Yeah. And the other important um, control about the windows, they're hiding here in view modes. I can switch the view modes and I can also assign shortcuts. Normally there are not short, not any shortcuts assigned, but I assigned one to Alt F12 doc pint, which is now active. And the other one that I like to switch to is window. So completely un, undocked in a, in a new window. So in this one, I can switch between them easily. So if I press. Oh, I need to have one active. So now I'm the find windows active. So if I press Alt Shift F12, it turns into a window. If I press Alt F12, 
sadly the toggle doesn't work there it would be nice if there also some kind of toggling mechanism would be possible that it always switches back to the last state if i invoke this one again but this doesn't work so i have to explicitly say window or dot and then thanks to my window manager i can simply switch uh, back and forth between them with um super arrow left and super arrow right which is specific to my window manager i can close this like a normal window if i open it again with the alt f shortcut it opens again as a window so it remembers the last state so that i use quite often this can also be combined with if you have several monitors you can instruct your window manager to open certain windows always in certain workspaces and all kinds of nice things um, you can do there then but that is a bit out of scope from what we're talking now um, so that's about tool windows uh, yeah what else um, no we're not done with the tool windows we also need some kind of convenient way to resize them because one thing it really goes on my nerves if i have to do something like this uh, regularly so i want this to be keyword control and it is so it's control alt right and control alt left i assign this to for windows that are um, on the sides and for the top bottom windows like this here for example it's down and out so it's basically just uh, with the arrow in the direction where i want this to grow or if i want to maximize a window i can also toggle this with plus yeah and you always see the actions down there so restore to window size maximize to window and this is a toggle. And if I want to move around uh, tool windows, I can do it like this. Yes, I can grab this and pull it over here. But I don't want to grab this and pull it around. So I want to do this with the keyboard. So if this is active, Um, I say move to Alt Shift 11 and then I get another little pop-up that I can control with the arrows and then I can move it around for example bottom right uh, which uh, didn't make a difference now because before it was bottom left uh, so let's do a different one let's do those names are a bit confusing, but uh, what it means is, I mean, you, you can look at the images. I think it's better to have just look at the images than to read the text. So, moving this around and switching from window to tool window, maximize. This is pretty much everything you might want to do with them. Okay, so I think that's uh, all about the two windows. Now we have two left, uh, Alt F1, select in. So if I'm in any kind of file uh, and I want to do something with that file in a different context, then I can say select in. Alt F1, and then I can look at this file in, for example, in my in my browser, in my file browser. This Nautilus in this case, so it even can open an external program with that file. So here's my README file in Nautilus or something inside of PyCharm, the project view. Now 
shows me the file in the project view. And then I can, for example, rename it or do something else with it. And then the last thing is switching through tool window tabs, which is different than switching to editor window tabs, which I hopefully will never have to do anymore, or let's say not very often at least. Um, so if I have several tool windows open, I can have two here, and I want to uh, swap between them. Yeah, I can click on them, but I don't want to. So I have control carry or circumflex assigned to this, which, which is just above the top and it, it's doing somehow the same thing. So this is why I put it there. So now I can switch around between those. And I can also do this now. This is why I have um, Oh yeah, shift, I don't know if I explicitly mentioned that. Shift escape, if I'm in a tool window, means I'm going back to the last used editor and close the tool window at the same time, which doesn't mean I close the tabs, they're still there. It's just the tool window is gone. So in this uh, control carry is also working for the tabs. So you might remember, I have it set to only being able to have two tabs open at the same time. And now I can swap between them because sometimes you have to switch often between two files. For example, a module and its test module. And now I have that uh, put to the same keyboard shortcut. And without this switcher popping up in between, I just can switch between them. And if I'm in a tool window, I can switch between them. And I can also have more searches open. So if I switch between them now, it just goes through them linearly. And this works also, for example, here, uh, I showed you earlier on with Alt down, you can choose uh, those subsections, but this shortcut now also works here, so I can switch around between those like this. And this is about all the uses I found for that. And with this, we're pretty much done. There's one last thing I want to show you, or two, one nice thing and uh, one bug. Um, so about the scoping of keyboard shortcuts, I don't know if that's the correct term in that context, but they are somehow depending on context also, so they have a scope. Um, for example, if I go into some piece of code that calls a function here, for example, uh, and press Control Alt P, I get the parameter info here. And if I do that in my markdown file, um, doesn't make sense in that context. So control RP can do something else, but, and here's the bug, it should be doing something now, but it doesn't. Uh, if my mouse is really broken to reactivate it, I think I have to go here and do this. So what you saw what happened, the focus, although I was switching, I was, I was here, I want to go to my readme file. And the focus the first time I did this was not in the file, but it was in the project view. Now it should work. Yeah. So that's also quite an annoying bug. But what I wanted to show you is this different context for the same shortcut have then different effects and you can make use of that then in your favor to fit this to how your brain works. Uh, for me, this is quite an obvious thing to do like this. So here, control P like this, 
give me control P like this. If I switch like that, it works. Uh, the next bug though is I can't uh, move around uh, with my move uh, keys now here in that preview. So same as before, let's try to go over here again and go back. But no, that is even a more annoying bug. So the only way uh, this works is really to click in here and then I can move around. Um, yeah, on that buggy note, I think I will end for now. Um, I, I just started doing this more explicitly, so I might put up more material about this uh, later on when I have found better ways to do the, these things or when some bugs were fixed. Um, who knows? But for now, thanks for listening, watching, reading, whatever you, in whatever way you consume this material. Um, and if you learned something and want to tell me about it, um, you can tweet to me. My handle is at Obestwalter on Twitter. Um, this is my website. And yeah, thanks for listening. <laughs>